For the last few years, every time I check out a CPU cooler, you guys are always in the comments section saying that I have to check out some thermal right coolers. Then when Amazon Prime Day sales came along, I just saw the prices of these water coolers and air coolers, and I knew I just had to buy practically the whole stack and test it out for you guys. Not only to see the differences between the thermal right models themselves, but ultimately to compare the value of these coolers versus some of my previous favorite value kings. And note, I did say previous there because after today, thermal right have gone to the leaderboard in terms of value. And there's not really a whole lot of negatives here except for one particular water cooler, which we'll talk about later. But let's get on to the results of all these coolers well, we'll talk about the pricing first, where we'll pull up the price list of what you can get these coolers for. And you'll notice here that the cheapest cooler we've got in the stack is $7. That's just a little budget banger that I use on real inexpensive builds. I just threw it in there for pretty much a bit of fun. Same with some of the other coolers in the stack, but you'll notice that Thermal Right is coming right at the top of that leaderboard there with their cheapest four heat pipe cooler offering exceptional value for money. But there is one right below that called the Burst Assassin 120. And this one, has even though a similar naming to the x120 it's actually in my opinion the value king of today's comparison and we'll tell you why about this right now what well, we've tested out a 9950 x3d both in cinebench r23 with the pretty much the limits removed in the motherboard so then it goes up to around 200 watts but then also we've decided to test this cpu with gaming benchmarks where that's about 120 watts load so we've got a couple of different scenarios here to see where all these coolers will line up at but let's get into these results talk about the coolers the build quality the noise levels and all that goodness right after today's video sponsor do you need to get windows activated and don't want to spend stupid amounts of money on a key well, if that's you, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $21 for Windows 11 Pro or $13 for Windows 10 Enterprise, you can get activated instantly. And also, don't forget to use the coupon code BFTYC for a big juicy discount. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And we're going to start off this benchmark with the 9950X 3D and Cinebench R23. One of those worst case scenarios for a lot of CPUs out there. If you're, say, video editing and you want to find out the maximum that your cooler is going to go to with a real strenuous workload. This is going to be the benchmark for you to look at here where we've got all the coolers lined up in terms of the temperatures in averages. We've also got the maximum temperatures, which we'll talk about soon, but it's very similar to the averages. There are a few little differences. Some of them do trade places, but overall the average temperatures, I think the one to look at because it does take away some of these little spikes that can happen and you'll just see which cooler is the best. Over 20 minutes of testing where I have Delta adjusted the temperatures to 22 degrees Celsius. Now, one thing about today's results is we've got a lot of graphs here. We've got a lot of numbers. So we're going to give a shout out to the accountants out there because I don't know how you guys do this day in, day out. This stuff gets to the stage where after not only writing down all these results and then correcting them all for Delta adjusted scores, my brain was just about to explode. So a big shout out to accountants out there. Love what you do. But let's look at these results here. We've got the ones in red from the Deepcool Gamax AG400 and down. These are highlighted in red simply because because they did thermal throttle, which did throttle on the maximum temperatures, which in the case of the 9950X3D does have a throttle limit of 95 degrees. So if we look at the maximum temperatures quickly for these coolers, you'll see that it does spike over 95 degrees, but then it comes back under and then it averages just under 95 degrees. But for all intents and purposes, these coolers right here, they're not really suited for 200 watts. But you'll notice in the mix here, we've got a water cooler. In fact, a 360 mil water cooler. This is the Thermal Right Frozen Notte. And this one here is a V2 version. Now, what makes this, in my opinion, a throttler, and the reason it's doing so poorly here is actually the mounting system that's included with this cooler. For some reason, I just could not get a good mount on the 9950X3D on AM5. And it's one of those sort of ones that latches on the size of the existing stock mount, as opposed to all the other thermal right coolers in today's comparison, they do mount with a screw down of a bracket provided by thermal right themselves. So much better mounting system on all the other thermal right coolers here. And so with the Note 360, this one for me personally on AMD systems at the very least is an avoid. And since a lot of people practically like nine out of 10 CPUs sold nowadays on the marketplace for gamers and single end desktop users, 
is AMD, it's pretty important to point this out, I would definitely go for the newer versions with the screw down mounting systems rather than these sort of ones that latch on to the stock mounting system. There was a big difference in average temperatures. As we'll see later, it also did pretty poorly, especially in the gaming benchmarks versus the other candidates out there. And considering it costs roughly the same money, it's definitely for me personally, a bit of an avoid. Now, some of, of course, the other examples here, we've got the iGo Ice, the Thermalrite X120, the four heat pipe version, and also the Deepcool AG400. These are four heat pipe coolers, and they're not really designed for 200 watts, as we'll show in the gaming benchmarks soon, where they did do better in these particular results. But of course, when we take into account the prices of all these coolers, they are extremely good value. But if we look just above that, we'll see there's one cooler, one air cooler that you can get on a budget that did not throttle. It just missed the mark in terms of throttling when it comes to a single tower cooler at an extremely good price. And that was the Thermalright Burst Assassin 120, where it scored on average here 91.3 degrees, making it at $20 roughly, an extremely good value for money cooler. And this is why this cooler in particular is going to be my favorite cooler going forward. It just did it all in terms of value and even still managing 200 watts, at least in a 22C ambient environment. That's really impressive considering the noises weren't that bad. But we'll get onto the noises a little bit later. Let's go through this stack right here. We've got the 120 V3 liquid cooler. This is a tight little unit, especially if you're going for smaller systems. This is going to do the job pretty well. But then above that, we've got a cool Leo B60T and also the Thermal Right Royal Pretor 130. Now, these are pretty much the identically same cooler. At least they're coming from the same factory. They've got the same screw down mount. They look identical. The fans are slightly different. So this is the key difference between the cool Leo B60T and the Royal Pre to 130. However, that said, the cool Leo isn't something to just say and dismiss straight away and think, oh, I've never heard of this brand before. It must be bad. It's actually a really good cooler, as we'll find out with the noise results. They actually include slightly better fans than the Thermal Right Royal Pre to. But back to both of these coolers, exceptional big sort of chunky tower coolers. But then we go above that, we've got an MSI Core Liquid 240. For the price, I would not recommend this cooler. And also it's one of the only coolers in today's stack that's actually had a pump that's died on me. I've actually got to go back to the retailer where I bought this from and return it. And then above that, we've got the Noctua D15 G2. Now, this is the best air cooler in today's comparison. However, that said, it does come at a hefty price tag coming in at 180 USD. So you would have to really love air cooling as well as really want the best air cooling versus water cooling to justify that high price tag. But that said, still the best air cooler out there. But then above that, we've got the Thermalright Aqua Elite 240 V3, which does slightly better than the D15. Then we've got the 360 as well. And these two coolers, they're different strokes for different folks. Yes, the 360 does a little bit better than the 240, but the 240, of course, you can mount this in some mini ITX solutions. But in fact, this cooler is my go-to recommendation for say a Lee and Lee Dan H20 uh, Mini ITX build being so effective in terms of its price and its cooling potential. But of course, if you're looking at the 360 V3, that's really capable, really good value too. Above that, the Infinity 360, these scored basically the same temperatures. I couldn't really put down much of a difference here as well as the Warframe 360. Now in terms of the Warframe 360, it's pretty much the same uh, cooler, except you just get an LCD display that you can customize in Windows. And it's actually a really good unit if you like those LCD displays. Very clean, very good look. Now above that is of course the winner in today's all-in-one comparison. That is the Liquid Freezer 3. I use this on my benchmark rig. It's the cooler that pretty much sits there. It's pretty much the cooler that sits there day in, day out outside of testing other coolers. And that's because it's just such a good cooler in terms of its temperatures. And even when it gets to its max noise levels, considering it's a 420, it does a really good job. Anyhow, switching over to the maximum temperatures here, it's more or less the same story as what we talked about with the average temperatures. But then we're going to move on to a very important graph here, and that is the gaming temperatures, which for a 9950X3D in Fortnite, it's pretty interesting scenario here because it does go to around 120 watts. It's gonna be a little bit more power hungry than say a 9800X3D, but the beautiful thing about this graph right here is if you're gonna be gaming on say a 7800X3D or a 9800X3D, you can use these results and say, hey, well, I'm gonna get a bit better cooling 
than what I'm seeing in these graphs. And so for this graph, I was actually surprised. None of the coolers uh, were on average thermal throttling here. Even the iGo Ice 400 SE, a $7 cooler impressed with 91.2. I mean, ultimately I wouldn't wanna run my CPU at 91 degrees day in, day out while I'm gaming, especially for long sessions, but it still goes to show that even a budget cooler can get the job done. But moving up the stack here, when we look at sort of a higher powered CPU for gaming, the Burst Assassin really stands out. Getting a chunk cooler in terms of temperatures than the other air coolers in the stack, and it does so with a level that's just under 80 degrees, making it a very impressive choice at this level. And again, further cementing the recommendation here as the absolute value king in air cooling. But then we go above that, we've got the water coolers, and then we've got the B60T as well as the Royal Preta coming in roughly the same. They're really good air coolers in their own right. In fact, they offer a really good price point for someone who wants to go with air cooling and they can afford that bigger option but they still want better temperatures than say the Burst Assassin. But one thing to point out is with the Coolio B60T as well as the Royal Pre to 130 is that they're significantly cheaper than that Noctua D15 G2. And it's only by basically a couple of degrees. So you really, again, you would have to want the best cooling to justify the Noctua D15. The MSI Core Liquid, again, just like the Cinebench results, not really good value. But then as we move up in the stack, it is the same story for these bigger water coolers from Thermalright. They are all extremely good value for money as well as offering really good temperatures. But then of course the Liquid Freezer 3 pipping out the victory, just being a more expensive cooler in general. Anyhow, costing more with no RGB and no LCD screen by a significant margin over that of the Warframe 360 which is coming in significantly cheap, which then also features all that extra eye candy. And now we're gonna move on to noise levels. And here is where we've got the max noise levels with the 9950X3D during Cinebench. And this is where the fans, we've got three fans on these water coolers. They do get quite noisy. So do keep that in mind. If you're getting three fans, you're gonna be pushing up a bit more noise than say two fans. But it is interesting to note that the Cool Leo B60T here for an air cooler did extremely well. Same with the Burst Assassin 120. For the temperatures that they're giving out and the noise levels they're making, they're actually really well controlled. The Liquid Freezer 3, of course, having those big 140 mil fans will push a lot of air and keep noise down. That's good to see. But then you'll notice at the top of the graph, the Snowman MT6, it basically has this static fan. Even even though it looks like a PWM fan, it really didn't change fan speeds at all. And so the noise levels, as you'll see later with the idle, noise levels are pretty much the same. The iGo below that has a three pin fan header, so that just does run at a complete static speed. And then the Deepcool AG400 is actually an interesting one where it does have PWM control, but its max fan speeds are essentially pretty quiet for what it is. I was actually surprised, making it a good choice if you're on a budget, especially below 120 watts. It's gonna do a great job too. Nothing to rule out there with the Deepcool AG400. The Noctua D15 G2 was coming in with better noise levels than the Royal Pre to 130, but that cool Leo B60T, an unknown brand using extremely good fans, was really good to see, and so the noise levels will balance out. And with all that done, we're gonna move on to the final test here, the idle temperatures, where we've got here just essentially looking at the minimum temperature achieved when we're running the 9950X3D on the desktop. For me personally, I don't really consider idle temperatures so much a problem. I mean, if it's gonna run any higher wattage with decent temperatures, it's gonna run the idle temperatures absolutely fine. But what I am more concerned about here is actually moving on to this next chart. And this is the idle noise levels. And here is where this one's pretty important for some people where they just want whisper quiet noise out of their system. They don't want it to make a peep. And so we've got here pretty much all these coolers giving out exceptionally good noise levels. I'd say 34 dB, at least in the testing that I'm doing here, is very slightly, very slightly audible. Below that is extremely quiet. And in fact, the Noctua D15 G2 does score the best here, at least in the test we were doing. And all the other coolers are absolutely fine. The Arctic Freezer 3, however, does have a little bit of pump noise or something associated with that in terms of its idling. And then of course that iGo Ice 400 SE, just a complete static fan speed and noise there. But again, $7, I think anyone can forgive this little banger especially when you mount it in a case that's gonna reduce the noise further, considering we were testing everything here on an open test bench for today's results. Anyhow, with all that out of the way, it's time to sum up my favorites for today's results. As we talked about, 
uh, before my overall pick in today's results, the all-rounder, the best value, the, actually the value king in my opinion, would be the Thermal Right Burst Assassin 120. Just such good value. Coming in roughly $2.5 more than the X120, you are getting 50% more heat pipe. You're basically getting 50% more cooler because it is a bigger cooler too. And those temperature tests showed that it's got a lot more high-end potential there. So it could be your forever cooler if essentially if you're just going for like those uh, mid-range CPUs or high-end CPUs like the 9800X3D that don't have that high-end sort of workstation performance, but they got that high-end gaming performance. So this cooler here is just an absolute no-brainer for the comparison, and it just completely wipes the snowman out of meta, where before that I was always going for the snowman. I thought it was always a good go-to cooler. The Burst Assassin going forward is my go-to air cooler for just blanket recommendations. Though it is important to note that the four coolers above that all have their place. I actually pick up all four of these coolers depending on the situation. The ICE 400 SE, $7. It's just gonna be a great budget CPU for anything 80 watts and under. Say for instance, you've got an i5 11400F or a Ryzen 5 5600 and you just need a cooler. This thing is going to do the job absolutely fine. But then below that, you've got the Wraith Prism, which you can't really buy brand new. I did just put this in there with a price of $10 because I sometimes pick these up for roughly around $10 used. Below that, the Deep Cool Gamax AG400, very similar to the X120 there from Thermal Right, depending on where you live. Very similar coolers, except there is one key exception here, and that is the AG400. You just flat out cannot buy this in America since Deep Cool is currently banned from selling their products there. So that automatically gives a default victory to Thermal Right's budget air coolers. Though if you're in Australia, for instance, the Deep Cool Gamax AG400, very solid cooler for the money and very similar build quality and also solid performance too, especially when you're going 120 watts and under. Though as we go down the stack, if you're looking for just exceptionally good value for money water cooling here is where thermal right just like that burst assassin 120 they just get it right as well looking at the 240 v3 45 bucks the 120 even 35 dollars i just never thought water cooling would get this consistently good and this inexpensive in due time. Now below that, you've got the Royal Pre-Tour 130 as well as the Coolio B60T. These are kind of like your higher end budget air coolers. They will be similar to the Peerless Assassin 120, which is the dual tower cooler from Thermal Right. And they've got a heap of other different versions of this, so I'm sure they'll perform very similar to one another, but these perform very well. They give you that extra edge in terms of air cooling. And if you're not comfortable going with water cooling, then these are gonna be definitely really good value options still, but getting that extra performance boost in terms of temperatures and lower temperatures over that of say a Burst Assassin 120. Though moving down below that with the 360s, I'd rule out that V2 Note. It was a no-go for me personally, but the other options here, the Infinity 360, the Aqua Elite uh, 360 V3, these are all extremely good options for relatively high-end performance without breaking the bank. And then of course, if you want the extra eye candy added on, you've got the Warframe there. The MSI Core Liquid, as we said before, really absolutely nothing special. Also considering the um, build quality concerns I have for MSI's water coolers in uh, personally, where I've got one that's just broken down, I've got to return it to the retailer actually today as of doing this video. And then lastly, of course, you've got the two flagship coolers in today's comparison, Arctic Liquid Freezer 3, the 420 mil version, extremely high in performance in terms of an all-in-one and giving low temperatures. And then you've got the Noctua D15 G2, which is the flagship air cooler. But keep in mind that is a steep ask in terms of price. $180 is a lot of money, but the build quality and the temperatures are phenomenal on this unit. Anyhow, guys, with all that aside, hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you've got any questions or comments about today's results or any thoughts and opinions of your own about these coolers, let us know down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.